2015 Harrison Grand Prix. I'm, I'm your host, Nimsh, and I'm joined this time by Ecop and Lothar. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Well, Ecop is doing great, for yeah. I assume, right? I just came off strong off of a 3 0 stomp. Pretty good and game. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just uh, riding that wave of positive momentum now to this casting desk. It's time to upgrade this casting desk. So we have three Polish guys casting in English. Well, yeah, I mean, so people would under actually understand us, obviously, Gnims. Kind of, yeah. It's a, it's a Polish sausage fest here right now. I will back off for a moment <laughs> and uh, just uh, direct our attention to our players who are Purple Drank from Team Archon and Maverick from Team, team Millennium. Millennium. Yep. Yeah, a great French player, a great US he's, player. He's Belgian, but he's French speaking and playing for a French uh, organization. That's right. That's why a lot of people confuse him as being French himself. But yep. uh, let's uh, talk about those guys. Who is Maverick, really? What did he win? What are his, his well, achievements? He had a great run at Seed Story Cup last time, and he won against Life Coach and during the second stage of the group um, group phase. Uh, so he's, he's one of the most analytical players I know, and he likes to rope a lot, too. So he, he actually, he's, in my opinion, he's like the second Life Coach. He's really great at analyzing the game, and uh, they think alike. Yeah. So I really like watching him play. Yeah, Maverick was on an unsto unstoppable role in um, Sea Story Cup, as you said. Um, the only uh, opponent he, uh, he was actually defeated by was the eventual winner, Orange. So uh, that was in the quarterfinals. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, no, quarterfinals was Orange against me. So I think that was something else. Really? Yeah. But he definitely was well, in the top eight. And he won the yeah. Gamers Origin 2 tournament, which yeah. was a 400-player Swiss. So he knows how to play the game. He is really good at it. Uh, but then, in front of him, there is Pur Purple Drunk from Team Archon. What do we know about Purple Drunk? Um, what? I, don't, I actually <laughs> don't know much about Purple Drink. Um, He's like a coach and analyst for, for the team, right? That's yeah. what I know. So. Uh, it, it's kind of weird, like when you think about coaches and analysts for for Hudson, they actually should be really great players at the same time. When it, an example, when you think about coach coaches and uh, analysts for, let's say, Counter Strike, those those um, guys don't have to be like super uh, skillful players because they 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 all differs from from the usual players, from the you know the shooters, the the the, um, uh, the players that are playing on the team. But in Hudson. You have to know the game to analyze it, so you're doing. You have to be a great player too. So why don't you compete at the same time, right? Well, I, I only can add that Purple Drunk is an amazing player from US, and he is showing his skills on ladder. But right now, game uh, two is actually ready because those players played while we casted the last game, while we casted Eco versus Sixo, and Maverick is already in the lead with his Warrior. This time, he picked his Druid versus Warlock, I believe. Uh, the no, there's no Warlock. The Rogue. Rogue, yeah. Yeah, Druid versus Rogue, definitely a very tricky matchup sometimes. Um, both players want to be proactive and just establish a good board uh, to potentially finish them off with uh, their respective combos. Druid with Force Plane to Savage Roar and Rogue with the um, Tinker's Chops and Oil into Blade Fury. Um, so whoever gets uh, the lead on the board first uh, will be the, the definite favorite. Wow, there's a coin shade into a shade. That's pretty strong, I would say, against the rogue, which has to, which is now pushed to use blade flurry as soon as possible. Oh, look at that! There's a deadly poison. Yeah, deadly poison and the blade flurry. So yeah, that's that's an answer. That, that to the could shade. be the huge <laughs> turnaround if we see double shade here. But do you risk the, the second shade? Of course you do. Yeah, but you have to play it. Yeah, it's re it's really it's really risky, but um, because this is a, this is something that. Uh, this Rogue might have in its opening hand already. Because as you said, like, Blade Flurry is the only answer against those shades, and the Druids always keep shades. Wow, so he not only clears the board, but on top of that he plays a 6-6 six, six Edwin Van Cleef to avoid BGH. There is not even the BGH, wow. but there is a silence. So at least Maverick can fight back. A little. Well, maybe not a little, because... Um, <sighs> well, Purple Drank is out of steam, kind of. Yeah, he has preparation, so he will not be able to, to prep sprint. You know, he is continuing with the aggression, playing those minions. No questions about Loth up there. Uh, I guess that would be the same answer, right? Because then you... It's one of the turns when Lotep practically seals the, the, uh, seals the, the, the turn, the whole turn for a rogue player, because six mana 
It's basically not enough to play anything apart from minions. Well, luckily for Purple, he top picks the Pile the Shredder, so that's a perfect turn because I think it, he would have done it anyway. Yeah, sometimes rogues play Emperor Thorison, which is also a viable option turn six. Uh, but yeah, definitely a strong top deck there with the Shredder. And uh, setting up for a nice uh, seven mana sprint, uh, filling up his end again. Meanwhile, Maverick, as the Druid player, needs to deal with his board somehow, but also push, uh, push the aggression so he can eventually finish off with uh, Savage Roar. So he uh, knows force of nature, I mean. He knows one Blade Flurry was uh, already played, so he can risk into overextending. So I guess Palti Shadow wouldn't be such awful option here, but at the same time, Belcher is a perfect answer to a four health, uh, free health minion. Yeah, but we see it perfectly. The sap into the Tinker Shops at all has the target, and it's even... Like, it can get BGH down, but even then it still drops a 2-drop after it dies, so it's still okay. Like yeah, like... Quiet the Treader is the one of the best means to have in your deck if you're relying on Tinker Shops at all. It's the best Basically, target. putting your opponent to 4, if you still have that minion and you have the weapon ready to kill them, even if he heals with lore, he's dead. Well, he can't do that. He has to pl replay the Belcher and, and that's it. Yeah. That's like not our options. So, so now, a single. Wait, is, is he dead? No, he's not. But no, single no. eviscerate seals the deal here. Even the backstab. And backstab it is! Oh. It's enough. No, wait. You'll be one off. Or not really? Oh. No, no, no. He's not. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was thinking like backstab for the 1 2, and then I looked at the weapon, which is 4 attack, and there was 5. So. Got confused there for a moment, but Purple didn't. He takes the game. Yeah, yeah. that's huge game swing with the. Um, with the Blade Flurry into two shades, like that yeah. is just backbreaking for the Druid because that's like the backbone of the uh, potential damage burst that the Druid can deal in the mid game with the, with the shades. Like they just provide you um, the damage necessary to bring your opponent into range of the combo, and if that doesn't happen, then you're just yeah. screwed. Yeah. And imagine if even one of the shades would live, he would have grown like to like eight four to this time. It yeah. would be a, a really great threat to Purple Drang's uh, HP. So it's 1-1, one, one, because we start, we did start with uh, um, in the middle of the game. So I had to, um, you know, because of the first game was so fast, they did actually play on the one game. Yeah, but to be honest, it's a bad matchup for the Druid, I believe. And right now Maverick takes the Druid again and ends up playing versus Hunter. What kind of Hunter is it? Well, it looks like a mid-range Hunter tragic by the Tile the Shredder. Um, but yeah, it has explosive traps. It looks like a pretty standard build, actually. Um, many, many... The mid-range hunters run double freezing and one explosive. That's like the standard build right That's now. That's true. We've seen one Savannah high main as well already. But there was wild growth for a Maverick, and he has nothing to play on four. But after that, he will have a couple of great cards. The problem with um, this curve, even if he curves out perfectly after ten five, there will be a freezing trap most likely for the, for the hunter, which destroys. Druid. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of curve, look at the Thunder curve. Turn 3 Shredder into turn 4 Shredder. Into That's puncher. just amazing against Druid. Yeah, it is. It's very hard to come back from this position. Oh, and the 4 drop off the top. Never lucky. So what he needs to draw is, um, let's say, a be weapon here. Would be also great to make a better deal with, um, with the trades, but he didn't get it, so... That's fine. So he set, he's setting up a freezing trap. He knows that only two freezing traps are left in his deck because explosive. Maverick, of course, will will recognize that that's a freezing trap. He will not attack with the Belcher. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but and he waits for the fr uh, for the force of nature here to drop um, to, to to get one of the treants back to his yeah. hand, and it's actually one of the best answers that Druid has in it in his disposal. Yeah, it's like the Druids unleash the hounds to counter the freezing. Yeah, trap. exactly. Yeah. But there are not dogs, though. Those are trees, and they are like twice the big, twice big. Unleash the trees. Well, he might also, if Torison survives, he might just use uh, Druid of the Claw. But then you do have to clear the Torison. Doesn't change anything. Yeah, it does change because now he can fit a one hero power this turn. It is actually interesting that he, uh, because I think he w could have, he had the option of just um, leaving it the Torison on the board. Right, because he has a freezing yeah. trap up after all. Well, I think he doesn't want to get um, to 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 give another chance to make the combo potentially, you know, for zero mana. 
Yeah. I mean, for the Savage Roar for being like one mana, the Force of Nature for four, that's yeah. basically free, right? And if you leave Torisan, look at the turn. Uh, there will be like a cut form uh, using the Freezing Trap, and then you can still play the Shredder and use the Torisan to kill something and get the Torisan effect on the other cards you have in your hand. With this, he lost um, part of the board, but... Uh, I think that's better option here, because the Shred doesn't have such value in this matchup because it won't grow more than 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, yeah, with Torison gun, this is definitely the play, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was thinking, like, if the Torison would be there. Right now, you contest the board with the bear, so it's, it's definitely good. But he's missing swipe. Is he? Like, doesn't really help in this situation. Just Ooh. kills the one ones, and that's basically it. Because then you have to oh, run your face. Ancient of War. Ancient of War? Whoa, that's a cool tech here. Yeah, we've seen some, uh, like I've seen some people on ladder uh, taking this in just to face, just to have better matchup against um, Grim Patron Warrior and Hunters. I like proking the trap now instead of waiting because of possible Eagle Hornbo that we can see already in the hand of purple. I agree that the Sylvanas is a play here. Let's, it's like one of the last turns when you can play Sylvanas at all. So otherwise, we'll be st so much behind. Like, playing Ancient of War can backfire really hard if there will be a silence or even wars, a uh, single Hunter's Mark. So Purple is just going ham. It's not like he can really play around Sylvanas, so ignoring Sylvanas is a correct choice. Well, there's no activator for Sylvanas anyway. You would have to use Savage Roar and then Big Game Hunter your own Sylvanas, yeah. an example. Yeah, the Belcher stops that perfectly right now. Druid of the Cloud, second Although, one. Although, with the Savage Roar, with the Savage Roar, he could have actually yeah, like killed off his own Sylvanas, but what, then what, he st what does he steal? Well, he steals a 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, it's not that <laughs> not big of a deal. Uh, yeah, so we're most likely going to see a Taunter. The first and and low tap? Yeah, I think so. Very strong, especially with that Savage Roar just uh, waiting yeah, to be used. Completely still negates Unleash the Hounds and no, no Command. Well, he can play Unleash the Hound and still get four minions. So, I think that's a good deal. Eight mana Huffer! Or Leo, Leo is not bad at all. But I think Unleash the Hound here is way better because you didn't so swipe at all. So if you sacrifice like your 1-1... One, one, hmm, wait, never mind. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's just more efficient to go for the cards that do not, do not cost more. So you can just play those cards, uh, those spell cards, the cheap ones, uh, later. Well, he's left at 7, that's... Clearly not um, a good point when you want to be uh, against a hunter. Keeper of the girl. Oh wait, with this, uh, how much damage is with Savage Roar? That's 8 plus uh, 12, 20 points of damage. Not, not there yet. Not quite, but it's close. Really close. Yeah, can what? he survive? That is the question. He has to play Ancient of War this turn. So if you play Ancient of War, and then you... Well, you know, that, that sucks. <laughs> I was thinking about the trades, like, how can you min minimize the chances of getting a 1-1, one -one? but there's... Now if you play you can only war. play a keeper and kill one of the 1-1s, one and it's basically it, but that doesn't really do much. So, yeah, clearing that is way, way more effective. And you kill the 2-2, two -two, and then you get 50-50? Yep. Oh man, that 50-50 high main! That's also denying the beast if he gets it. Oh, he didn't Misses. get it. Maverick, never lucky. Still, still, he might win this game. Who knows? Yeah, because there's no decent solution against that uh, Ancient of War right now. Yeah. Uh, but the juggles are co going to be come into effect he in a big way right now. Two juggles to the face. That's a one. And that's a miss. With two juggles to the face, he would win. There's still the juggles from the high main. Still juggles from the Leok. high main. Well, that's huge. Wow. Okay. That's 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 it. That's one more damage than the Savannah uh, than the uh, uh, Huffer here. All right. So Dread not really working for Maverick. Purple getting two quick wins versus a Druid deck that has to win at least once. Yeah, but the problem with the Druid, like, it does if it doesn't hit the perfect curve with uh, Wild Groves and Innovates, and it kind of struggles a lot, a lot. To be honest, yeah, so Maverick just with n having no play on four uh, with four mana was just a little bit too. Uh, yeah, he felt too far behind actually. So that that was kind of already a decisive factor. 
And now we're going to see a very interesting matchup, Freeze Mage versus Druid. Yeah, and this one has to go into Maverick's favor, you would assume. Honestly, the, I, <laughs> I've been playing Freeze Mage a lot recently, and I've had a worse win rate against... Uh, like, I've won more matches versus Control Warrior than versus Druid. Wow. It's such a bad matchup. Why is it such a bad matchup? Because it's just um, the fact that you are under constant aggression and the Druid just represents so much burst. So when, you, when you're like one turn not able to freeze or de deal with the board, then you can just die in one turn like super easily thanks to Savage Roar. Yeah, but um, Maverick might just play one combo here. So that also changes a, changes a lot when it comes to this matchup because he plays Engine of War, right? And he had to cut something for that. Uh, maybe he just doesn't play cards like, I don't know, Scenarios or Ragnaros or... Well, Ragnaros is o can also single-handedly win against Freeze Mage. Yeah, exactly. And also he is armoring up, so it's some added armor that's kind of weird when you're Freeze Mage and you want to burst your opponent down you after extra You would think that uh, downgrading Ragnaros uh, for an Ancient of War would be bad, uh, and it is against Freeze Mage. Uh, so Freeze Mage definitely in a better spot here. But Ancient of War also really annoying against Freeze Mage with a 10 health, and Freeze Mages don't run stuff like Polymorph, so this Ancient of War will stick around for a very long time if, when it hits the board. It seems like Freeze Mage is struggling against those big minions, like Ancients of War, High Mains, but here... Oh, uh, look at that. Maverick, oh my god, he got the second Keeper. Like, I was about to say, he wasted the first Keeper for the Acolyte, because now Doomsayer... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, the second Keeper just... Devastating. Off well, the top. now he has to play the Shadow of Nexramas, so it will grow to five when there will be turn seven for purple rank. So it will be will be not in range of flame strike, right? Yeah, purple needs that draw. So you say shade will be out of range for flame strike, right? Wait, wait, I'm just counting him. Three, then six, and four. No, he won't no, be. He, won't he will be exactly at four. Yeah. So, well, this sucks for a Maverick here. Well, he might draw a low tap, maybe. You have to go face with everything, I think. Yeah, just get the mage as low as yeah. possible. Considering what to attack with the Keeper. Well, he's thinking about triggering... Uh, I don't think I agree with that. Like, you need to push for damage and... Uh, yeah, he wants to preserve the health on the Druid of the Claw, basically. So it's less vulnerable to AoE in combination with the minions that, uh, that purple has. Oh, well, that's one of the best <laughs> best drops against a Freeze Mage. It is resistance to yeah. the Flank Strike. It's like, w like it, it, it has a Death Rattle here. Imagine if that would be a Lore Walker Cho. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we see, we see you want to see that scenario again? Yes! <laughs> against the Freeze Mage, that would be hilarious. <laughs> hilarious, uh, but not for the Freeze Mage. So how much damage is that? That's 4, 8, 10, 12, 14 damage, and Mage's at 24. Actually, Lower Walker Cho against Freeze Mage isn't even that good. Freeze Mage can just Flame Strike, and then Flame Strike is pretty useless against Freeze Mage. Yeah, Blizzard Aww. the same. Frost Nova the same, yeah. perfectly. All right, so Maverick going face. But he's still not breaking the Ice Block. And it's getting closer and closer to Alexstrasza. Yeah, but yeah, after but Flame Strike, he is going to break the Ice break the ice block. And there's no Alexstrasza. Like, even if he draws Alexstrasza, he still doesn't have the burst necessary to then finish the game off. Well, he has to play defensively. Defensive Alexstrasza? Without burst? How do you play that? It is the problem. Like, you have to play your cards uh, really defensively. Like, you have to Alexstrasza yourself most of the time against Druid. And when that happens, uh, mostly at ice block was already popped as well. So, you just have... Two re two resets are just gone in an instant uh, mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. heal you up, and then you also have nothing to damage the enemy. You just it cannot finish him in time. And then the druid will most likely have a uh, big game hunter against Alex Strada, so that will be dealt with. It seems like it's over. So much burst for Maverick. Even if Purple, well, he can set up another ice block, but then the ice block will get popped. Even if he's if he gets two secrets up. Swipe would be okay. You don't even need a swipe. Just combo out and get the ice block pop, and then you just win with hero power. The only question is, can you get the ice block? Yeah, definitely, you can get the mage to one, so that you win with hero power. 
Because if he plays like Straza, he will not be able to freeze you. And well, before and, befo and before counter spell. But yeah. Well, it's turn tonight, right? So he was thinking about Alex Raza, but he has Big Game Hunter in his hand, so that's perfect answer. So this time it went well for Maverick, but he will face most likely. Um, I mean, no, most likely for sure he will face his warlock against the pr uh, freeze mage, and that's something you don't wa want to really have, right? Unless it's a Maligos. If it's a Maligos warlock, I think it should be fine. You have double heal ball as normal handlock, and you do have burst. So basically, you race who plays stories in first, who gets more combo cards, and who can combo up first. Yeah, I actually like playing against Freeze Mage as handlock, honestly. I, I don't think the matchup is that bad. And why is that? Normally, like, you die to burst? Yeah, like, you just have to uh, apply your heal and your silences properly. Like, the silences are the most important things, obviously. But yeah, we will see what kind of. Um, Warlock Maverick actually has. Uh, we heard some rumors that it's actually combo, right? Yeah, oh my god, it's actually an OTK Warlock. I just realized. And uh, Purple knows it's OTK Warlock. Why does he know that? Uh, because Maverick was playing it before, and people scout. Like, they, they walk around, they see who's playing what. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Purple was scouting that. He knows what deck is uh, Maverick, Maverick is running. So, Hi by OTK Warlock, you mean the one with Arcane Golem Power Roaming? Or... I think so. Like, you don't call Maligos an OTK Warlock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is something that Savitz uh, to told me, like, a moment ago, before the match started. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Like, th I'm definitely excited to see that particular deck in action because I'm... I don't know. I don't think anyone ever actually brought it to the table here this tournament so far. At least not from, I don't know. The problem with the uh, OTK Warlock is the fact that it does really a huge amount of damage, but it does it in one chunk. And if it does it in one chunk, then it doesn't really lower the values of, um, of health totals of the mage after the ice block. So it's not easy to break the ice block and then, you know, finish the job next turn. Yeah, that is true. All right, so let's evaluate those hands. There is Torison for purple, but no coin. And for Maverick... Well, the Twilight Drake is kind of a big deal. Yeah, the Twilight, is just, the Twilight Drake is such an annoying minion for the freeze mage to deal with. It has so much health and... Mages obviously don't run Polymorph or Silence, like the Freeze Mages don't run it. There is first Power Overwhelming. So the plan is Arcane Golem, Power, Power, Faceless. faceless right? I, I think so. That will be the most, most Warlocks want to, do, will want, to want to do that. Unless you play Leo Jenkins and your plan is to drop Emperor. Yeah. Oh, there it is, Arcane Golem. And there is Emperor. Torsa. Wow. And he has the coin. And he wow. has the PO. So... <laughs> if <laughs> if Pooper drank, well, he actually has the um, secret anyway. Eh, never mind. <laughs> he, he knows what deck it is. But even if you know what deck it is, how do you play around this? You can't really play around this if the combo pieces are there. Yeah, there's no taunt or anything like that to interact with that. Yeah. It's like Freeze, freeze Mage all does what Freeze Mage yeah, does. All you have to do is um, stay out of range with your health. Basically. Yeah, but you still like you try to draw cards, you try to play your own Torison. Get the Alex Strazen burst ready and win the game before they kill you. So the game plan is probably very similar, regardless of what deck it is. Wow. That Turn is 5 cool. Emperor. This is one of the most annoying things you can see in this game, yeah, I think. Yeah, especially with such a huge hand that we see yeah. right now. Eight cards getting reduced. It's crazy! Th this is the next Druid! <laughs> yeah! It's even better than Innovate. Well, it's like four Innovate, so it has to feel good. And, and it also it blocks Torison from purple because he can't play Torison now. He has to kill it. Yeah. So let's see. We know that um, Purple Jank has 38 HP right now because there's an Ice Barrier. And the only way to kill the mage is to actually attack him with something. So you have to proc the Ice Barrier. So there's no way around it. And um, even with the maximum burst here, you can have like double POs and faceless if you draw those, and he still didn't draw those. So that's like yeah. 8, 16, 20, 28, 28 damage, right? Keep in mind though, this is not his only win condition. Like, look at the minions that he has in his hand. He has the double Twilight Drake in play already, which is already very annoying for the mage. Yeah, of he has the low tap, which is obviously like a huge crippling blow to the mage uh, at one turn. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. this, I think it's all going to come down to how effectively Maverick can use that low tap that he has in his hand. Yeah. Well, you want to trigger the low tap at um, 
I mean, I'm, I think this is the best turn when you want to prevent an another ice block. I think this turn, Lothop oh. will be amazing. Wow, this there's is a baseless. The combo yeah, has been assembled. Lothop here to protect your setup. I and think just a Siphon Soul. And go face with everything else. Are, aren't you afraid of the Flame Strike? Like, if you clear Torison and play Lothop, you basically have two turns of attacks with the, with the minions that are left. Well, he goes for completely something different. Yeah, he just wants to establish a greater board so he can potentially um, clear... He can actually potentially pop the Ice Block next turn. Is right. he? Well, his board is almost full. All he needs is like two spots and one is, one is empty. So if one minion dies here, he can go for the combo next turn. There's a first bolt. Well, um, hmm. We'll potentially see a little blizzard here. That spawns one minion that is frozen. Yeah, but now that leaves enough room for the combo, but obviously like he cannot pop the block right now because his whole board is frozen. And the Doomsayer will look forward to actually clear this board, but we actually see that Siphon. Maverick has that solution against it with the yeah. Siphon Soul. Siphon Soul will be great here. And that's the, probably the reason why he also kept it in, instead of damaging, uh, in instead of killing Thorsten with it, because yeah, he needed that yeah. answer against Doomsayer. Also, there is no clear for purple, so he needs to top deck something like... Strike. How much damage does uh, Purple Drang has in his hand? It's like 3, 7, 13 damage, right? Yeah, there's a lot of damage and we... And he just saw one, one of the heals and the combo lock probably doesn't play like a lot of heals, right? He might play like one heal bot? I don't think he plays two. Yeah, this is definitely a precarious spot for Maverick here. How but with, mage, with Freeze Mage having only four cards in his hand, do you really expect uh, this much burst already? Well, he played the extra drag to your face. What, what does that indicate? Well, that he always has to do that, like no matter what. You can get into panic mode, but on the other hand, it's not like he can do anything about it. Alex Straza will always go to enemy face, that's, that's for sure. Uh, a very good move from Purple, because it's not like he's going to die now, so he gives himself a chance to top deck something, or even just finish the game with wow. a simple ping. So he goes, he wants to kill him. Wait, what What does this tab did achieve? Uh, he wanted a heal bot. Probably. He basically, he wants to give himself a chance to draw into a heal bot. Maybe a big game hunter? No, it's like Alexstrasza is not threatening him at all with Belcher. Well, it, it, uh, it is if it, there's a way, way of clear it from the way. So you can attack with the Alexstrasza to the face for just 8 damage. Would you last? Alright, I guess if you have double crossbow, maybe. So it's basically game next turn if there will be no heal. Yeah, yeah he Maverick is. needs to heal right now. That's an implosion and so it's not it. So if he, he taps into heal bot, he can still survive. I'm not sure if he even plays that. I think the early OTK versions, they played heal bots because you want to replenish your health after tapping so much to get combo pieces. But not necessarily, he might not be playing them. The last tap said to me that he might be playing heal bot. Well, if he does that, then he definitely doesn't play heal bot. Because if he fills his board, then he can't even play an, an under min after the tap, right? Yeah. By the way, whoever loses this match is still in the tournament because those both of the guys are 2-0. So dropping one game is not lethal and safe well, for them. Well, lethal. that's the game. Six damage from Fireball, Crossbow for free, and Iceland for four damage. That's it. Purple Drank takes the match with Freeze Mage against Combo Lock. So I would say that's no surprise. And this means yeah. that only Ecop was the player who was able to win with a clean score. All the other streamed matches was a free two. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, you meant only with, with, within one match, okay. Oh, wait, actually, Vortex. Who, who won? Vortex or Ignite? I Ignite won. All right, that's the one I, d I didn't cast. Yeah. But it was like 3 1, right? Yeah, it was 3 okay. 1, yep. All right, uh, so I guess we can invite Purple to, to talk to him and uh, learn more about this uh, splendid Archon player. And tell us. Ask questions. Yeah. So, Lothar, get the guy here. And, uh, Iko, how did you enjoy casting? How well, it's always a pleasure sitting here at the casting desk. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm always trying to improve as a caster as well, as, as well as a player. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I hope I can return here tomorrow as well. Well, Let's I see. hope you will be busy the whole day just winning series, but uh, yeah. maybe if, you know, 
Yeah, of course. Like I'm, I'm like my main priority this tournament is obviously is obviously winning. But um, in the meantime, I can also cast some maybe. All we'll right, see. and we have our guest, Purple. What's up? How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good. Just uh, really pumped to be here, and I'm winning for once. How did you? <laughs> How did you feel like getting into that 2-2 when you faced the OTK Warlock? You knew it's an OTK Warlock, right? Oh, yes. So that, that's why uh, you saw me keep the Emperor off the mulligan. Honestly, uh, off stream, the first game, he 30 me in one turn with Patient Warrior. And I, I was kind of demoralized going on stream right after that mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of got some favorable RNG. You got the Emperor off the mulligan. Uh, I knew he was playing uh, combo lock. So I was just like, eh, mow as greedy as I can, take as many shortcuts as I can. And it paid off. Tell yep. us a little bit more about that game one that we didn't see on stream. Uh, so he had a Warsong Commander, two Patrons, an Inner Rage, and two Aurora ones, I think, with uh, the Emperor up. And he just did uh, like 30-something damage to me. Yeah, well, that sounds right about Patron, oh, wow. right? Yeah, yeah. That, that sounds deck's good. It's really fun playing against that deck. It's really <laughs> interactive. <laughs> yeah, well, the same goes for the Warlock, right? It can do 28 damage. Uh, 24. Well, 24, yeah, right. You're yeah, right. Uh, I was at 40 the whole time. I was not worried about that. Yeah, <laughs> also, there's um, we. Uh, I mean, I mean, uh, I think that uh, freeze mage is really favored against uh, combo yeah, warlock, right? Because the, the chunk of damage is like you know yeah, one that, that big deal. Yeah, that kind of yeah, it just blows its load, and then it has nothing less th left yeah, after exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Like you, by doing that big combo, you actually use all your mana, and then you don't develop anything else, and then mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, if your opponent has second block, you tend to lose. So I, yeah. I felt pretty good yeah, we thought game that five. We thought that for a moment in game five, uh, with the hand that Maverick actually had with the low tap and all the big threats um, that are non-combo based, uh, yeah. he actually had a legit shot at uh, beating you. But of course, you had the Alexstrasza into the burst necessary in yeah. your hand. So that was and we still in your favor. He, uh, he missed first year in two heal bots. Kind of a lock on him. We, we had like a million draws off the double Acolyte at the end. And he wouldn't be, have been able to pop me for another two or three turns. So yep. uh, That's true. Even That's if the true. game went longer, I think I had him. So by the end of the day, you are having a 3-0 score. Yeah. Is, is that the best score from the Archon team? Unfortunately, I think so, because Zigzo lost. Uh, it's kind of nice to have Archon giving a Winter's interview up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of oh. embarrassing, really, too. It's, it's, or, all right, so tell us more about yourself. Like, What are you doing at the Archon house? Because uh, Lofar mentioned that you're coaching the guys as well. Yeah, uh, before pretty much any single tournament, if time permits, I'm preparing everyone to actually go play uh, in tournaments, being if it's actual gameplay, deck selection, and just going and digging information on our opponents. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a great player yourself. I'm not bad. Like I was, I held rank one legend for like ten straight days last oh, season. A humble guy. I yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Good. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much. Um, do you have any shoutouts uh, maybe by the end? Yeah, I have a big shout out to Amaz. We wouldn't be here without him because he paid the bus to get here. And without him, we'd still be at the hotel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> a, a great shout out then. And <laughs> it's good that you're here and we can interview you and you can actually play your matches. So great yeah. stuff, man. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay, I think we're ready to actually Congrats go again. into a short break right now. And then after that, we will have a match. Chucky versus who's his opponents? Can't see. Uh, Robin, Robin Hu. Hu yeah. Robin Hu. Uh, Who? That's, that's Robin. Player. That's Robin. All right, guys. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.